and thanks for joining me. Today I just wanted to go over a couple of different ways of using the adjustment layers for what some people refer to as check layers or analysis layers. Um, and although they don't have a specific pers purpose themselves and you delete them afterwards, it's certainly good um, to have these sort of in your, in, in your pocket so you can pull them out to sort of help to show up some of the flaws or highlight some areas that need adjusting like saturation differences or white in the background and that sort of thing. So I'm going to be going over a few of those today. To start off with, I um, just want a simple one, really one that can help to exaggerate or highlight some of the dust areas in an image. Um, sometimes when you open it up an image it's not always immediately obvious some of the things that need to be tidied up like dust and that sort of thing. Granted there's you know some bigger spots like that, that you can spot on your own but there are certainly um, dust spots that will need you know, you will need some help to spot them. So um, basically you start off on your base layer there and just add a black and white adjustment layer. And then on top of that, I'm just gonna add a curves layer. I'm not gonna adjust that curve, I'm just gonna change it to multiply. Essentially all that's doing is darkening it down. Um, now if I click back on my base layer there, now with that in mind, it's made it a lot easier for us to see some of the dust spots that need to be adjusted. So certainly a lot easier for me to pop those out. By removing the color as well, it uh, obviously eliminates the saturation and just shows you the the um, luminosity of the layer. So it certainly highlights all, all the sort of lights and darks. So the darker spots being the dust. Um, and as you can see, there's certainly some here that you just, just can't see without, the, without those check layers on. So it's certainly a lot easier and saves you a lot of time spotting them later on and that sort of thing. So that's that one, that's, pretty, that's a pretty basic one, so we can get rid of this image, don't need that anymore. Next one I just wanted to go over is a check layer for white background images. Now, although not a lot of images are shot against a pure white background, um, you certainly need to have this if you're going to be doing a lot of print work or even just to sort of show images online because you're not sure the calibration settings of some other people's monitors and that sort of thing. So some people's monitors might be a lot darker than yours, yours might be quite bright, and an image that looks like it's got a white background um, to you might not to other people. And certainly in print, because see white areas or bright white areas in print means that there's no ink going down. And if there's a little bit of, of, of a darker spot, it means that the printer is putting down sort of little, little spots of of dark grey or, or, or black and it will show up dramatically in, in print so you just have to be aware of that. Um, even in an image like this it looks like it's already got a white background, brilliant, um, looks like it's all ready to go. Um, so we just need to double check that. One way of doing it is just to bring up a levels like this, just to basic levels um, and crank, crank the blank point all the way over to the far right hand side. Now you can see that it's actually not white here. So it's brilliant white up here, there's nothing, there's no detail or anything like that there, so that's fine. But in here it's actually you've actually got some some details. So in print that would that would look muddy. Um, you can help just by reducing the opacity of this layer, just so you can see what's going on globally. Uh, click back on your main layer. And then for something like this, I mean you can use the eraser tool and the pen tool to cut them out, etc. But um, if you just want to just want to get in there and make some minor adjustments like, like I'm going to do here, then you can just go onto the dodge tool and select the highlights from the drop down there. You want to work at a very low exposure, um, anywhere between sort of 5 and 10%, something like that, um, and you want to uncheck protect tones. What the protect tones actually does, well, it says there, minimizes clipping in shadows and highlights. So if I wanted to actually reduce the wall, sort of get rid of any sort of tone there, I wanted, wanted to make it white, that protect tones is going to stop me from, from actually doing it, so I want to uncheck it, okay? Um, and then you just come in here and just brighten all that up, okay? Just just quite simply, like that. Um, and again, if, you, if you're not sure, you can come back, pump up the opacity again, and you can you can still see that there's still some bits there that need to be done, so you can you can go in and sort those as well. Okay. With, with the highlight tool you can get away with, with a lot um, because it really is just working on almost close to whites um, and, and making them white without it affecting too much the areas around it. Okay. Um, once you're done, delete that and 
it's all good. Um, next image, let's have a look. Next check layer I just want to go over is one that highlights spots and blemishes and that sort of thing. Um, and it's pretty unforgiving, but that's what we that's what we want it to do. Okay, so I'm just going to come back to the scratch image here. Um, so this is it, this is pretty much the raw. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a black and white layer again. But this time uh, I want to accentuate or highlight the blemishes and that sort of thing. As we know, spots and blemishes tend to be tend to be red or you know show up as red areas on, on the skin. So in this black and white layer, if we just reduce the reds or darken the reds, should we say, sorry, darken the reds. So moving the reds to blacks obviously really highlights them. So you can see the darker areas in there and then you can come back in here and there's a million and one ways that you can get rid of spots and blemishes and that sort of thing. Okay, then once you're done, you can just delete that and that's it. So that's that one, just close that one down. And then the last one I just want to go over today is a bit of a strange one in that it, you don't, you, you won't use it that often, but when you when you need to use it, it's definitely a good a good tool to have. Um, and what this one does, the one I'm gonna, the check layer that I'm gonna go over now, shows you differences in saturation. So earlier on we looked at differences in, you know, the sort of uh, luminosity. Now we're just gonna look at the saturation zone. Let's come back to the base image, okay? And to get this started, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to choose an adjustment layer, which is selected color, okay? Um, and this so shows you all the colors in, in the image itself. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come down and reduce the blacks to minus 100% in all of these colors. So reduce the black to minus 100% in all of the colors. Um, and one thing to bear in mind is that you do also want it set to absolute as well. Okay, so reduce the blacks in all the colors and then on the whites plus 100% black on the whites, the neutrals and the blacks. Okay, so we've got a black and white image that I'm just going to add a curve layer just so that we can actually brighten up to see what's going on. I'm going to delete that later on and that's not that doesn't need to be precise you just and that's going to be different for many many images um, so that's it so we've got our we've got our selected color there and we've taken out um, the blacks in all the colors so basically the, the black points in this image right now should be areas of low saturation saturation and the white areas in this image are areas of high saturation so you may well imagine that the you know the lips have got a lot of red in them, so they're obviously going to be white here, which is high saturation. Now there's also um, differences, tonal differences in the skin here. Okay. Um, in fact, I'm just going to bring that down a bit, just so just to, just to make it a bit easier to see them. So once we've done that, okay, what? How do we how do we use that? Well, I'm just going to create a new layer, and I'm going to change that layer to saturation. There. Okay, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a brush. I'm going to start painting on this. Okay, but I want a brush that has a saturation of 50%. Okay, um, so zero hue, 50% saturation, and brightness 100%. I'm just going to okay that. And then on the other brush, I'm just I just want white, so 100% white. Okay. Uh, now with this, uh, we're going to choose the brush. Um, with this, we want a really, really low flow and opacity. I know with dodging and burning, you have it low, but with this, you know, you're looking at, I mean, I'm going to go with 10 opacity and 10, 10 flow here, so really low to start off with. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to paint with our 50% saturation brush onto the darker areas of the image. Okay. Um, just in there. Remember this this layer is also set to saturation over there as well. Okay. And what you see is those darker areas starting to lighten up because basically you are adding adding the saturation in there. Okay, and then I'm just gonna go back to the white and on some of these some of these white areas, ironically I'm gonna paint white onto it. Okay. So just let me come out and show you 
progress so far, just so you've got a rough idea. Let's turn those check layers off. Okay. Now I'm hoping you should be able to see this on YouTube, but with it on, you've got some we've got some we've got some redness in the cheeks there. With it. Yeah, with it. Yeah, so with it with it off, there's redness in the cheek, sorry. Um, and with it on, sort of we, we are reducing that, that redness, so taking out that saturation, okay? Um, and also on the cheeks as well, you've got saturation there as well. But this is a funny one, um, this is a funny check layer because if you were to obviously make that all the same tone, then it's just gonna look like a, like a doll. Um, it's gonna look really, really weird. Um, so you do need to obviously leave leave some differences there, but as you can see up here, you're seeing different saturation fluctuations on the forehead and that sort of thing. The colours are going being saturated up, up there. So the, again, the whiter areas are areas of high saturation, so obviously blemishes and that sort of thing. Um, now I would probably wouldn't use this for blemishes because I'd probably just do use use the other way of, of doing it um, that, we, that I mentioned earlier on. Um, but for areas of sort of redness, especially with like portraits and that sort of thing, where some people may have redness around the you know around the eyes or nose and that sort of thing, can be a, a great way of just showing it up and being able to um, eliminate that. Okay. Um, so yeah. So just to recap, the, the white you use the white brush ironically to paint into the whiter areas okay um, and you use the the pink here the red the 50% saturation brush to paint onto the darker areas in the image okay and that will help to even out the tones obviously I'm being quite quite crude with with how I'm applying it but yeah so that will and yeah just really paint with really really low opacity and flow okay All right, guys, well, I hope some of those have been uh, useful. Give them a go. Um, and if you can't see this saturation one on the video here, then, yeah, definitely give it a go yourself. Um, it is very subtle, and that's what it's supposed to be for. It is supposed to be very, for very subtle um, changes. Uh, so, yeah, give it a go. Um, but, yeah, thanks very much indeed for watching. By all means, head on over to my website, jkxphotography.com. There's lots of different tutorials and tips and techniques on there. Uh, but, yeah, thanks again. Take it easy.